before the divisive everything now. Before James Murphy molded their sound. Before they beat Lady Gaga, Eminem, and Katy Perry to win the Grammy for Album of the Year. Arcade Fire released Funeral. The definitive indie rock album that carved them into the music history books. It seems that most of us have had a moment of transcendence with this album, and perhaps because no band has sounded quite so emotionally affected. And rightfully so, the album was crafted at a time when multiple members had lost loved ones. Richard Reed Perry's aunts, Regine Chansain's grandmother, and William and Wynn Butler's grandfather all passed within the span of a year. When family members kept dying, they realized that they should call their record Funeral, noting the irony of their first full-length recording bearing a name with such closure. If the record is the funeral we're attending, then the band is supplying the eulogy. It's music as catharsis. But how was Arcade Fire able to translate their grief into music that so masterfully provides such relief? Let's explore emotion in Arcade Fire's funeral. The opening track sums up the band's youthful vitality. A toy-like piano tinkles away over a pulsating drone, cello, and organ before a distorted guitar enters. It's classical, folk, and rock. Arcade Fire's signature blend. Despite their large symphonic sound, the band's music on Funeral is built around rather simple motifs. There's a minimalist form to its maximalist content. The repeated hooks and melodies are anthemic, but the harmonies are largely static, the meter is nearly always 4-4 with little variation, and tracks stick to standard verse-chorus patterns. It gives the listener an oral advantage to the eclectic material. The theme of the song is ultimately about escape, seeking out a new future while longing for the past we left behind. While there's an incredible portrayal of emotions lyrically, a lot of emotion stems from its anthemic hooks and melodies. Arcade Fire's choruses are breakthroughs. Imagine musical emotion as a kind of suppressed pressure or force, which finally erupts from within the musical structure. Their songs grow in intensity, not only pushing forwards, but out. The intro of Tunnels meets the listener at a moderate tempo of 111 beats per minute. But by the first verse, the added percussion brings us to 115. Here, we also see Arcade Firecraft sentence forms within their verses, not just across the track. Line 2 shifts up half an octave midway through and contains twice as many syllables as line 1. This happens in every verse, adding to the gradual intensity of the song. More percussion joins in as verse 2 ramps up the tempo to 120 beats per minute. Its second phrase contains more syllables than the first, and as we head into the first chorus, we arrive at a quick and bright 130 beats per minute. Before the first chorus, Arcade Fire have already affected our emotions by changing the tempo. We began at a slow pace that instilled sadness and perhaps serenity, and when we reach the faster tempo, we graduate towards happiness, excitement, or even anger. But the third verse is where the song reaches its cathartic climax. Wind forces more syllables into each phrase than previous verses, creating the densest point in the song. This allows for the final catharsis to finally burst through. And that moment Wind reaches the limitations of his voice intersects with the song's gradual rhythmic acceleration. It's the climax of the percussion's journey too. Take a listen to the intro once more. That arpeggio motif returns again for the outro. But it's now a ghostly voice that's been waiting to break through. When the climax of a song reveals the essence of an earlier thematic idea, the climax isn't just louder, faster, or fuller, it's revelatory. It acts as both a climax and a resolution. I think those resolutions are essential, those climactic breakthroughs are necessary, especially when most of their songs lyrically are stuck in a moment. Power Out is not about the future. It's about the protagonist's current uncertainty about that future. About their frustrations towards previous generations. Ultimately, the emotion in Power Out comes from the physical strength of the track. It's the heaviest song on the album, and its intensity contributes to those feelings of panic and rage. It's a manifesto, and its chorus treats it as so. 
As the track moves forward, it gradually grows its chorus at the expense of the verse. Verses are eventually halved, quartered, and disposed of completely. The themes on Funeral are amplified by their choruses. Wake Up references the continual letdown that is childhood expectations. Its chorus reflects that perfectly, as the song's only way is down. The chorus melody is a dying fall that eventually sinks a full octave. The complementing harmonies fill us with happiness, relaxation, and peacefulness. The melody leads us towards the acceptance of growing into the world around us. It provides a sense of relief. While the instrumentation progresses, erupts, and eventually concludes, their lyrics are trapped in a single moment. In the backseat sees our protagonist driving forward with the retrospective glance of funeral mourning. As children, we're in the backseat with no control. But as we grow older and family members begin to leave us, we're thrust closer towards the driver's seat. If you haven't noticed by now, their music pushes forward just as much as it stays still or looks back. Similar to how they're always leaving and returning to the suburbs, they do so with their verse chorus conventions. They're perfect analogs of suburban conformity, and yet, at the end of the road, these conventions are celebrated. Combined with their in-the-moment lyrics, you both feel their music and listen closely to what's being said. You listen because of, not despite your feelings. It's shimmering and joyful, but also sad and dark. And that's the key to funeral success. It's darkness. It was crafted at a time when multiple band members were losing loved ones. And while the album delves into themes of death and loss, it's ultimately about renewal. The funeral Arcade Fire are attending here isn't the end. It's the beginning. When it's over, they're vowing to live their lives to the fullest in honor of those who have passed. Arcade Fire's pain is evident in their recordings, but their emotional release shines through. Funeral was the light in their darkness. Funeral was hope. Funeral is a beautiful work of art, and you can begin to connect and engage more deeply with a work of art using this week's sponsor, Skillshare. In her class, How to Talk About Art, A Beginner's Guide, Jordana Zeldin can empower you to experience art you love in a thoughtful and satisfying way. You can get full access to the class by using the first link below. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. They have more than 25,000 classes in productivity, lifestyle, music making, anything you'd be interested in pursuing. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to join the classes and communities that are just right for you and your goals. A subscription is less than $10 a month, but you can use the link in the description to get a two-month free trial. Start refining your experience of making meaning in art everywhere. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to learn more about the stories behind the music you love, consider supporting us on Patreon for an inside look behind the making of these videos. And tell me, what's your favorite Arcade Fire record? And that's it for me. Again, thanks for watching, and keep listening.